The Death of Baldur, a tragic story of the slaying of the son of Odin and Frigg that showcased a mother's lament. In this video, we will be going over Baldur's death found within the Poetic and Prose Edda. First, let us start with the Poetic Edda with none other than the poem Voluspal. We begin with stanza 32, where the Volva begins to describe the events surrounding Baldur's death that are to unfold in the future. I saw for Baldur the bleeding god, the son of Odin, his destiny set. Famous and fair in the lofty fields, full grown in strength the mistletoe stood. She continues in stanza 33 and 34. From the branch which seemed so slender and fair came a harmful shaft that Hoth should hurl. But the brother of Baldur was born ere long, and one night old fought Odin's son. His hands he washed not, his hair he combed not, till he bore to the bale blaze Baldur's foe. But in Finsalir did Frigg weep sore, for Valhall's need would you know yet more. Here she is describing the nature of Baldur's death, which was done by the hands of Hother, who has thrown a shaft made from mistletoe at Baldur, killing him. She goes on to describe Vauli, born from Odin and Rinder, who at one night old will slay Baldur's killer, Hother. Baldur's Drömer, or Baldur's Dreams, is another Eddic poem which details the death of Baldur. It opens with the gods holding council, where they discuss the reasoning as to why Baldur has been having bad dreams. Odin takes Sleipni at his horse and rides to hell, and by using magic and mighty charms, he wakes Evolva from the dead. The following dialogue ensues, beginning with Odin speaking. Vigdam my name, I am Valtam's son. Speak thou of hell, for of heaven I know. For whom are the benches, bright with rings, and the platforms gay, bedecked with gold? The Volva says, here for Baldur the mead is brewed. The shining drink and a shield lies o'er it. But their hope is gone from the mighty gods. Unwilling I spake, and now would be still. Odin goes on to ask who will be the one to murder Baldur, and she answers that it will be Hother who kills him, with a far-famed branch, or the mistletoe. Odin then asks who will avenge the death of Baldur and kill his slayer, and she says the following. Rin bears Vauli in Vesterselir, and one night old fights Odin's son, his hands he shall wash not, his hair he shall comb not, to the slayer Baldur he brings to the flames, unwilling I spake, and now would be still. The poem closes out as follows. Wise woman, cease not, I seek from thee all to know, that I fain would ask. What maidens are they who then shall weep, and toss to the sky the yards of the sails? The wise woman spake, Victam thou art not, as erst well I thought, Odin thou art, the enchanter old. Odin spake, No wise woman art thou, nor wisdom hast. Of giants three the mother art thou. The wise woman spake, Home ride, Odin, be ever proud, for no one of men shall seek me more till Loki wanders loose from his bonds, and to the last strife the destroyers come. Since we have just ended Baldur's Dreimer with the mention of Loki, it is important to discuss his involvement in the death of Baldur. Still in the Poetic Edda, we can go to Lokasena, or the Flighting of Loki, where stanzas 27 and 28 are dedicated to discussing Baldur. A dialogue between Loki and Frigg took place as follows. Frigg spake, If a son like Baldur were by me now, here within Aegir's hall, from the sons of the gods thou shouldst go not forth, till thy fierceness and fight were tried. Loki spake, Thou wilt then, Frigg, that further I tell, of the ill that now I know, mine is the blame that Baldur is no more. Thou ceased to ride home to the hall. Before moving on from the Poetic Edda to discuss the recounting of the story within the Prose Edda, there is one more mention of Baldur's funeral within the poem Vathrudnismal. Odin, who originally came to Vathrudnir's hall under the guise of Gangungraudr to obtain wisdom from the Jotun Vathrudnir, asked one final question to Vathrudnir to end their battle of wits. Odin spake, Much have I fared, much have I found, much have I got from the gods. What spake Odin himself in the ears of his son, ere in the bale fire he burned? Vathrudnir spake, No man can tell what in olden time thou spakest in the ears of thy son. With faded mouth the fall of the gods, and mine olden tales have I told. With Odin and knowledge now have I striven, and ever the wiser thou art. It is here that Odin's true identity is uncovered, and even the wise Vethrudnir does not know the words that Odin whispered in Baldur's ear when he was laid on the funerary ship. In the prose Edda, we get a telling of Baldur's death that has been expanded upon from the original source material which we've just gone over prior to this. The beginning of the story is this, that Baldur the Good dreamed great and perilous dreams touching his life. When he told these dreams to the Aesir, they then took counsel together, and this was their decision to ask safety for Baldur from all kinds of dangers. 
and Frigg took oaths to this purport, that fire and water should spare Baldur, likewise iron and metal of all kinds, stones, earth, trees, sicknesses, beasts, birds, venom, serpents. And when that was done and made known, then it was a diversion of Baldur's and the Aesir, that he should stand up in the thing, and all the others should shoot at him, some hew at him, some beat him with stones, but whatsoever was done hurt him not at all, and that seemed to them all a very worshipful thing. But when Loki Loivirsson saw this, it pleased him ill that Baldur took no hurt. He went to Fensalir to Frigg, and made himself into the likeness of a woman. Then Frigg asked if that woman knew what the Aesir did at the thing. She said that all were shooting at Baldur, and moreover that he took no hurt. Then said Frigg, neither weapons nor trees may hurt Baldur. I have taken oaths of them all. Then the woman asked, have all things taken oaths to spare Baldur? And Frigg answered, There grows a tree spread alone westward of Valhall. It is called Mistletoe. I thought it too young to ask the oath of. Then straight away the woman turned away. But Loki took Mistletoe and pulled it up and went to the thing. Older stood outside of the ring of men because he was blind. Then spake Loki to him, Why dost thou not shoot at Baldur? He answered, Because I see not where Baldur is, and for this also that I am weaponless. Then said Loki, Do thou also after the manner of other men, and show Baldur honor as the other men do. I will direct thee where he stands, shoot at him with this wand. Ulder took the mistletoe and shot at Baldur, being guided by Loki. The shaft flew through Baldur, and he fell dead to the earth, and that was the greatest mischance that has ever befallen among gods and men. Then, when Baldur was fallen, words failed all of the Aesir, and their hands likewise still lay hold of him. Each looked at each other, and all were of one mind as to him who had wrought the work, but none might take vengeance, so great a sanctuary was in that place. But when the Aesir tried to speak, then it befell first that weeping broke out, so that none might speak to the others with words concerning his grief. But Odin bore that misfortune by so much the worst, as he had most perception of how great harm and loss for the Aesir were in the death of Baldur. Now when the gods had come to themselves, Frigg spake, and asked who there might be among the Aesir who would fain have for his own all her love and favor. Let him ride the road to hell and seek if he may find Baldur, and offer Hela ransom if she will let Baldur come home to Ausgard. And he is named Hermodur, the bold, Odin's son, who undertook that embassy. Then Sleipnir was taken, Odin's steed, and led forward, and Hermodur mounted on that horse and galloped off. The Aesir took the body of Baldur and brought it to the sea. Ringhorni was the name of Baldur's ship. It was the greatest of all ships. The gods would have launched it and made Baldur's pyre thereon, but the ship stirred not forward. Then word was sent to Jotunheimr after that giantess who was called Hyrken. When she had come riding a wolf and having a viper for bridle, then she leaped off the steed, and Odin called to four berserks to tend the steed. But they were not able to hold it until they had felled it. Then Hirakin went to the prow of the boat and thrust it out at the first push, so that fire burst from the rollers and all lands trembled. Thor became angry and clutched his hammer, and would straightway have broken her head had not the gods prayed for peace for her. Then was the body of Baldur born out on the shipboard, and when his wife Nana, the daughter of Nep, saw that straightway her heart burst with grief and she died. She was born to the pyre, and fire was kindled. Then Thor stood by and hallowed the pyre with Mjolnir, and before his feet ran a certain dwarf which was named Litir. Thor kicked at him with his foot and thrust him into the fire, and he burned. People of many races visited this burning. First is to be told of Odin, how Frigg and the Valkyrs went with him and his ravens. But Freyr drove in his chariot with the boar called Goldmane, or Fearful Tusk, and Heimdall rode the horse called Goldtop, and Freya drove her cats. Thither came also much people of the Rime Giants and the Hill Giants. Odin laid on the pyre that gold ring, which is called Dreipnir. This quality attended it that every ninth night there dropped from it eight gold rings of equal weight. Baldur's horse was led to the bale fire with all his trappings. Now this is to be told concerning Hormodr, that he rode nine nights through dark dales and deep, so that he saw not before he was come to the river of Gjol, and rode unto the Gjol bridge, which bridge is thatched with glittering gold. Molgudr is the maiden called who guards the bridge. She asked him his name and race, saying that the day before there had ridden over the bridge five companies of dead men. But the bridge thunders no less under thee alone, and thou hast not the color of dead men. Why ridest thou hither, on Hellway? He answered, I am appointed to ride to Hell to seek at Baldur. Hast thou perchance seen Baldur on Hellway? 
She said that Balder had ridden there over Gjolf's bridge, but down and north lieth Hellway. Then Hermoder rode on till he came to Hellgate. He dismounted from his steed and made his girths fast, mounted and pricked him with his spurs, and the steed leaped so hard over the gate that he came nowise near it. Then Hermoder rode home to the hall and dismounted from his steed, went into the hall, and saw sitting there in the high seat Balder, his brother, and Hermoder tarried there overnight. At morn, Hermoder prayed hell that Balder might ride home with him, and told her how great weeping was among the Aesir. But Hel said that in this wise it should be put to the test, whether Balder were so all beloved as he had been said. If all things in the world, quick and dead, weep for him, then he shall go back to the Aesir, but he shall remain with Hel if any gainsay it or will not weep. Then Hermoder arose, but Balder led him out of the hall, and took the ring Thripnir and sent it to Odin for a remembrance. And Nana sent Frigg a linen smock, and yet more gifts, and to Futla a golden finger ring. Then Hermoder rode his way back, and came into Ausgarth, and told all those tidings which he had seen and heard. Thereupon the Aesir sent over all the world messengers to pray that Baldur be wept out of hell. And all men did this, and quick things in the earth, and stones and trees, and all the metals. Even as thou must have seen these things weep, when they come out of frost and into the heat. Then when the messengers went home, having well wrought their errand, they found in a certain cave where a giantess sat. She called herself Thok. They prayed her to weep Baldur out of hell, she answered. Thok will not weep waterless tears for Baldur's bale fair. Living or dead, I love not the churl's son. Let hell hold to that she hath. And men deem that she who was there was Loki Loivir's son, who hath wrought most ill among the Aesir. Loki's punishment, which will be saved for another day in another video, follows these events. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we can't thank you enough for watching. If you would like to see more stories within the lore that have been broken down like Baldur's death was here, let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more heathen content, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you'll never miss a video. From our heathen household to yours, we hope you have a great day.